Welcome, one and all, to the classic Spongebob iceberg. I love Spongebob, particularly the classic seasons, and this is an iceberg I may pertain to seasons 1 through 3, and some of the fourth season, of Spongebob. You know, the good ones, because I'm a sponge boomer. The original seasons are also just the seasons I'm most familiar with. Sure, I could maybe go on to later seasons, but I'd know less and less of what I'm talking about. You've no doubt seen an iceberg video before, and I don't think I really need to explain what this is, so let's just get started then. Also, a special thanks to Twigs for this idea. We fittingly begin this iceberg with the titular character of the show, Spongebob. As you're all no doubt aware, Spongebob is, well, a sponge that lives in a pineapple under the sea, absorbent in yellow and porous is he. Oh wait, I'm just quoting the theme song at this point. Spongebob is generally a jovial character, even if he sometimes bothers other characters, but that isn't his only emotion either. Spongebob is, however, rather naive and will sometimes get himself into dangerous situations without thinking things through first. Spongebob in the early seasons is really just a joy to watch and he's such a great character. Some people even call his early season iterations annoying, but for the most part, I don't really see it. I like Spongebob in the early seasons. Help Wanted. Next we have the very first Spongebob episode, that being Help Wanted. You've all probably seen this episode before, so I don't think a recap is really needed. I will say, I find this episode rather interesting in how it's a bit different, even from season 1. From its music choice, animation style, and even the way some characters act. Mind you, none of this is a bad thing, but I just found it all very interesting. Squidward. Squidward is Spongebob's next door neighbor, who's constantly bothered by Spongebob antics and general goofing off. Squidward is also a bit too self-confident sometimes, which has gotten him into his fair share of trouble. He's rather cynical about life, in contrast to Spongebob's generally much more optimistic outlook on life. But Squidward's most important character trait? We're all Squidward. Patrick. Patrick is another of Spongebob's neighbors, living on the opposite side of Squidward's house. Patrick is a starfish who is notably rather lazy, goofy, not the brightest, but enjoys hanging out with Spongebob, being his best friend to a point of having the best friends forever ring. Mr. Krabs Mr. Krabs is Spongebob and Squidward's boss, and the owner of the Krusty Krab, which we'll get to in just a moment. Mr. Krabs loves money, at times to a point of being comical, such as having a literal breathing fee at one point in time, but at least in the early seasons he seemed to also genuinely care about his employees. The Krusty Krab. Of course, we can't mention Mr. Krabs without discussing his restaurant, the story of one man's hard work, perseverance, and sweat. But mostly, his sweat. The Krusty Krab is home of the Krabby Patty, because no one else would give it a home. The formula for which Mr. Krab seeks to guard very carefully from his business rival, Plankton. It's also noteworthy that this is one of the most popular restaurants in Bikini Bottom. I guess the Krabby Patty is just that popular, huh? Plankton. Plankton is the owner of the Chum Bucket, who lives with his computer wife, Karen. His main goal is to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula from Mr. Krabs at times during these early seasons getting fairly close. Oh, and also maybe world domination, but that seems to be a secondary goal. Plankton, ironically enough, always manages to fail in some form or another, despite his supposed intelligence and his ability to build complex machinery and computers. Maybe Plankton needs to learn that some things just aren't meant to be. Band Geeks Band Geeks is a fan favorite episode, which again I'm not going to get into that much since I can guarantee you that almost all of you know about this episode. The reason this is a fan favorite though probably has to be for just how many jokes land, as well as the ending of this episode. Seriously, a superb episode, probably one of my favorites honestly. Opposite Day Opposite Day is another well-known episode which sees Squidward finally trying to move out of his house and away from Spongebob and Patrick. This, of course, backfires, though, when Spongebob and Patrick decide to become Squidward and ruin his ability to sell his house. Also, honestly, I think Gary pretending to be Squidward, too, was quite funny. Graveyard Shift Yet another fan-favorite episode, with this one featuring Spongebob and Squidward working at night at the Krusty Krab, with Squidward deciding to tell Spongebob a scary story to freak him out, 
until the things from the story start actually happening. Also, I loved a lot of the jokes in this episode, whether it be Spongebob walking on the ceiling, the walls oozing green slime, Spongebob running to the dumpster outside, or even the reveal of the hash-slinging slasher. Sandy. Sandy Cheeks is a squirrel from Texas that decided to move to Bikini Bottom because... Actually, I don't know if that's ever explained, at least not in the first few seasons. She's a friend to Spongebob, going so far as to get everyone in town to search for him when she thinks he's gone missing. And she's a karate partner with Spongebob as well. She's strong, intelligent to a point of being able to build a rocket to the moon, but is also very strong-willed. She won't take Spongebob making jokes about her without Spongebob paying for it, and God help you if you dare to insult Texas. Gary. Gary the Snail is Spongebob's pet snail. While not seen nearly as often as some other characters, the times you do see him can genuinely lead to funny moments, with a particular favorite being the time where Spongebob tries to give Gary a bath. Seriously, that episode was funny. Pizza Delivery Okay, this one is a favorite to nearly everyone. Pizza Delivery is a season 1 episode where Spongebob and Squidward have to, well, deliver a pizza. Nothing goes according to plan, but that's what makes it hilarious. Between Spongebob acting ridiculous, to Squidward ignoring Spongebob's attempts to help, and even the boulder that the Pioneers used to ride on. This is probably within my top 5 or 10 favorite episodes, though to be fair that's tough to say since nearly all of the first three seasons are amazing. I will add this for the episode however, it's also the source for one of my favorite Spongebob YTPs. The Dutchman's Treasure The Dutchman's Treasure is the treasure of the Flying Dutchman, a green ghost pirate who buried some of his spoils under the sea and lives on... a... ghost ship. Yeah, alright. The Dutchman's Treasure is also an in-universe board game, which actually led to the real treasure, which is just as much genius as it is silly for the Flying Dutchman to do. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are a former superhero duo that were in retirement. The duo used to star on TV before having retired, although Spongebob and Patrick managed to get them out of retirement by literally annoying them out of it, which... works. Now they're back to being heroes and fighting crime. Sort of. Also of note is that at least for a while there, all the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy episodes were numbered. Chocolate Guy Okay, seriously, if you're watching this video, you know exactly who Chocolate Guy is. However, what you might not know is that Chocolate Guy is actually known as Incidental Six, but let's be honest, everyone knows him as Chocolate Guy, who for some reason would go insane at the mention of Spongebob and Patrick selling chocolate in the episode Chocolate with Nuts. As an aside, do people actually eat chocolate with nuts? Like sure, peanut butter I get, but actual pieces of nuts? Yeah, I don't get that. Chocolate Guy buys all of Spongebob and Patrick's chocolate at the end of the episode, which was such a hilarious twist to me when I first saw the episode. Chocolate Guy is such a memorable character and is up there as one of my favorite side characters. Bubble Bass This one's another favorite side character of mine. He only appeared in two episodes. I SAID he only appeared in two episodes, one of which being a very small role. I don't know, I just find Bubble Bass hilarious, and his order is nothing short of iconic, to a point where it became a meme, and someone actually decided to recreate his order as close as they could to what was actually requested, which was... a bit different than what Spongebob gave him. Yeah, just a little bit. Captain Painting Captain Painting is at the very beginning of the title sequence, and we don't really know much about him. He's a still painting aside from his lips, and apparently said lips are Steven Hillenberg's, which is actually pretty neat to find out. He only has a couple actual character and vocal variations, such as in Christmas Who, where his dialogue is changed for the Christmas theme, and in Your Shoes Untied, he actually gets some extra dialogue. Technically though, he has appeared in every single episode, if we include the theme song. Patchy the Pirate Patchy the Pirate is a recurring side character played ironically enough by Tom Kenny. I say ironically because of Patchy's unhealthy obsession with Spongebob and his hope to meet him one day. Patchy stars in live action segments with his pet parrot Potty. Sometimes these are just to introduce the cartoon, other times they're full blown extra portions of the episodes. Frankly, I enjoy the Patchy segments. I know some people might just want Patchy to get out of the way so the episode can start, but I've always really enjoyed these, and they're always a joy to watch, even now. 
They're self-referential before that was done to death, and the skits, while obviously done on the cheap, are quite nice, funnily enough because of how supposedly low quality they are. Like, you can obviously see the seams, but look, I just like the patchy segments, okay? At least in the original seasons. Sheldon. I could just play the clip from the episode Plankton's Army here, where he invites over his family to help steal the Krabby Patty formula. Yeah, as it turns out, Plankton's name is Sheldon, which gets a laugh out of Karen and, frankly, everyone else, including me. I'm sorry if your name is Sheldon, but your name is funny. For years it has been my goal to acquire the secret formula for- but, uh -huh! Snowball Effect. Snowball Effect is not only where the image for the first portions of this iceberg came from, but also an episode of the show. Basically, it snows in Bikini Bottom, Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward decide to have a snowball fight, and Squidward takes it a bit too far. Honestly a good episode, and I did like some of the visual gags, although I have to admit I wish they'd done a bit more with the snow idea, but having it focus around a snowball fight is also really good too. Realistic Fish Head the realistic fish head is this character, both from the intro as well as often appearing as a news anchor or general narrator. Apparently the character was a fish that Hillenberg bought at some point in time, or at least based around one. There is not too much to add to this character though. Bold and Brash More like belongs in the trash! Bold and Brash is a painting made by Squidward which, despite being thrown out in the original episode, has also become something of a meme on the internet like many things from the original seasons. Not as popular as some of the others, but still decently popular that sometimes you'll find it in people's homes or vlogs. Oh hey look, here's Logan with it. There you go, I did it. I made my mandatory SML reference for the video. Okay guys, are you happy? If you're here for SML, there you go, there's your reference! There's your funny, funny puppet man reference, there you go, ha 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 ha! My leg. My leg is a phrase yelled by the aptly named My Leg Guy. And no, I'm not calling him Fred, since I don't want to. We're talking about the original seasons here, after all. This exclamation is usually heard either when someone is injured, or when a large group is injured. It's a pretty funny running gag, although it makes me wonder if it's always the same leg that gets injured or what. Reef Blower Silent Episode So, for some reason, the episode Reef Blower from Season 1 has no dialogue. I'm sure it was done as a fun little experiment of an episode, especially given the episode's relatively short runtime, but even in the original seasons, it stands out a lot and I've always found it really interesting to watch again. Some people think that this was the first episode and they just didn't have voice actors yet, which... no. I don't know how or why people think that, but it isn't accurate at all. Plankton's Lab this is Plankton's Lab, a nice Labrador dog, which we see in this one episode and I'm pretty sure never again. It was a very funny gag, I'll admit, and I always laugh when seeing it. As for Plankton's Laboratory, uh, it's a laboratory. Located in the Chum Bucket, he usually lives here along with his computer wife Karen, and he invents or tests things, usually with the goal of trying to get the secret formula. Which, wow, would you believe it never works? Squidward's Dance. Towards the end of Culture Shock, Squidward goes on stage trying to save the show and begins dancing like this. It's become a meme and honestly every single time I see this portion, I laugh so much. It's genuinely so funny. Ironically enough, this saves the show in the most roundabout way possible, which I mean good job Squidward, your dancing worked and it was turned into a meme. Steven Hillenburg. I've mentioned Steven Hillenburg a couple times already on this iceberg, but to be brief, Steven Hillenburg is the creator of Spongebob, originally planned to be an educational series teaching kids about marine life, though it seems like he ended up with a lot more. Steven only worked on the first three seasons and the movie before leaving for a while, which is why you saw quite the decline in quality going into season four. Steven did come back after a long while, but unfortunately was diagnosed with ALS and later died in November of 2018. Rest in peace, Mr. Hillenberg. SpongeBob Second Season Commercial Spongebob second season, Spongebob second season, now on DVD. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, right. This commercial was for the second season of Spongebob being released on DVD. The reason I mention this commercial here is because of just how catchy the song made for it was. There isn't too much to add to this, but I just really like this commercial. Incidental 70. 
Incidental 70 is the Hey Spongebob's Back guy from the episode Pickles. I made a nearly hour long video about this character, which was totally not me rambling on about nothing in an unscripted manner as an April Fool's joke or anything like that. Season 1 Patrick isn't dumb. Have you ever noticed how Season 1 Patrick isn't as dumb as his later season counterparts? Like, sure, he still isn't bright by any means, but he's certainly been dumber. I think he's more silly than flat out dumb in the first seasons, but what do you guys think? Sailor Mouth Original Recordings If you've been on the internet for a while, you've probably heard of this one by now. But for those who don't, Sailor Mouth was the episode of Spongebob where Spongebob, Patrick, and eventually even Mr. Krabs are swearing, but it's all censored with various sound effects. The various actors for the characters were told to basically fake swear, but since it was more difficult to make up fake swears on the fly, they asked to just really swear. And, uh, uh, you know, so we were supposed to be recording that, and, you know, swearing without really swearing is hard, because they would just say ad lib, uh, almost swearing. You know, <laughs> swear about the fact ad lib, uh, fake swearing. And then we were like, this is too hard, could we just really, really cuss, and then you guys just bleep out all in there? <laughs> And, and Clancy Brown, Mr. Krabs, like, I'm all for that! <laughs> so, so that's what we did. So, uh, so that was, uh, so I would say that was a very difficult episode just because listening to uh, Patrick and uh, Squidward and Mr. Krabs uh, really uh, uh, dropped those bombs. <laughs> Maybe the funniest thing in the world, and also something you will never be allowed to hear, ever. <laughs> That means a tape of actual Spongebob actually swearing with actual swear words likely exists. With that being said, the voice actors have said that it will likely never be heard ever. There are obviously reconstructions out there, but damn it, I can't deny it'd be really funny to hear the originals. Battle for Bikini Bottom is canon. Battle for Bikini Bottom is a game released in 2003, which puts it in just the right place to be considered canon to the original seasons. The theory goes that this is actually canon to the series, which I suppose could make sense. In fact, I suppose you could consider this for some of the other games as well. Admittedly, it helps that Spongebob is very episodic in nature, very rarely making references to older episodes, for better and for worse. Mr. Krabs' Strength There are times where Mr. Krabs shows that he is extraordinarily strong. He was in the Navy, so I suppose that might explain part of it. He can literally lift up his entire restaurant with one hand and not break a sweat. I have no idea how he got this strong, or why it can sometimes be inconsistent, but it's still a pretty cool detail. Spongebob Exact Award Count In Big Pink Loser, Spongebob has a closet full of all the awards he's gotten, which is… actually pretty fitting for this series. But just how many are there exactly? I don't know. What, did you think I was going to count them or something? Yeah, I'm not doing that, especially since a lot of them are hidden, so I'd have to estimate. Krusty Krab Pizza Foreign Dubs Spongebob is so popular that it was inevitably going to get foreign releases, and bootlegs, but more importantly for this entry, foreign dubs. One of the funniest portions of the show is Spongebob's Krusty Krab Pizza song, and in the foreign dubs it's always funny to see how the voice actors handle it. Some of them are actually pretty close to the original, others are very freestyle, shall we say, and some others still just sort of give up. I'll play a few of my favorites here though. Pizza <laughs> Pizza, pizza, crusty crab, pizza, uh, tentu saja, dadah, dudu, dadah, 
Pizza, 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 yeah! Pizza, pizza, oh, oh, pizza! Krasi krabu pizza, the krab pizza. Puy kausia, pati puy kausia pizza. Pizza, 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 pizza. Rusty Crazy! Hey, pizza tau, irma! Trashko krabo pizza! Pizza krabo tau! Trashko pizza tau! Irma! Je pizza hoi! Man besozem! Man besozem! Čel sosi iz čel ti ke goč! Pizza! To dobra pizza je! Zaufaj! Krasti krab! Pizza dla was! Горячая пицца, вкусная Why do some of these sound like it was recorded in someone's basement with a $5 microphone? Красти пицца, найбуляя пицца, за тебе и мене Кердина пицца Nosferatu Nosferatu is a vampire from the German film of the same name, but that's not why you're here. Nosferatu was importantly the one flickering the lights in the Krusty Krab. This was such an odd twist since it was pretty clearly for adults in the audience. I mean, what kid was going to know who this character from a German horror film was? I mean, they might have assumed it was Dracula, maybe? Which, ironically enough, was what the film was based on, as it was apparently an unauthorized adaptation of Dracula, which was supposed to have all copies destroyed. Clearly, that didn't exactly happen. Forgotten Episodes. This entry refers to the episode that most people probably forget. I'd say that award has to go to the paper. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's a bad episode or anything, far from it as a matter of fact. It's even been the subject of some memes. But ultimately, I think when I and many others think about it, it's almost referred to as, oh right, it's that episode. Maybe that's just me though, and I'm sure it varies from person to person. Two King Neptunes. Yeah, there are two King Neptunes, the show version and the movie version. Why are there two versions though? I really don't know actually. I mean, supposedly they're the same character, and I know the movie takes place far in the future relative to the original seasons, but yeah, I'm not buying that. There's having a bit of a difference, and then there's this. These are literally two different characters. Tom Kenny Shower. Speaking of King Neptune, there's a visual gag where King Neptune opens a portal to... someone in the shower. Yeah, it turns out this is Tom Kenny. I actually didn't know this, so that was pretty funny to find out. Heartman. Heartman is this one guy in a heart outfit that appears only once and for the sole purpose of having Patrick destroy the costume. Beach scene took place in a bathtub. In the episode Pressure, there's a scene where the characters go onto the beach. I read somewhere that this was done in a bathtub, and while that wouldn't surprise me, I can't find anything concrete supporting this. Caveman Spongebob not to be confused with Spongegar, who we'll get to. Caveman Spongebob is a technically unnamed version of Spongebob from prehistoric times, whom Squidward encounters after traveling back in time. Caveman Spongebob is technically the first along with Caveman Patrick to ever learn jellyfishing. And oh yeah, they also hate Squidward's clarinet skills. Okay, frankly that shouldn't be a surprise at this point. Squilliam's Heart Attack In Band Geeks, Squilliam has what we can only assume is a heart attack after finding out Squidward's band is actually really good. Funny how he didn't appear for the better part of a season after this incident, which is what leads me to believe he had a serious complication if nothing else. If he weren't so smug all the time, I'd almost feel bad. Suggestive Episodes 
Okay, this is another one I heard about, but I'm uncertain on. Of course, there's obviously Sailor Mouth, which has the suggestion of swearing, you know, because that's exactly what it is. And there's that one where SpongeBob is watching something on TV before it quickly changing the channel and Gary shows up, which suggests... Well, okay, I think you know exactly what it suggests. But then there was another one I saw, which claimed that Karate Choppers was supposed to allude to... Sex. And honestly, I still don't get how this one... Oh my goodness, oh no, I think I get it now. With that being said, any other ones are a bit of a stretch no matter how you look at them. Even that Karate Choppers one, you kind of have to reach for. Mr. Krabs' real age. Mr. Krabs' license says that he was born in 1942, which would make him over 80 years old at this point, which... Wow. However, in Can You Spare a Dime, Mr. Krabs says that he's been in business a long time, having a dime that clearly wasn't made within the past... century. This is mostly a joke entry to be fair, since I doubt Mr. Krabs is several hundred years old or anything like that. Or... is he? Rich Spongebob. Have you ever wondered why Spongebob has never had to worry about money all that much? Well, my theory is that Spongebob was already doing okay enough beforehand, but he was able to become extremely wealthy after the success of Pretty Patties, to a point where he was getting so much money that he was quite literally giving it away. It helps that since Mr. Krabs took over after Spongebob, Mr. Krabs got to take the fall for things, so Spongebob likely got away with all the money. Though, weren't Pretty Patties more or less the same as Krabby Patties, but with colors? I'm surprised Mr. Krabs didn't demand a share. The Iron Butt. A play on the iron lung, which some people would have to get in after having contracted polio. But in this case, it's the iron butt, which you get after having broken your butt. I don't know, I just think this is a funny gag. No Name. No Name is an especially rare blue jellyfish that Spongebob had never been able to catch, which managed to force Spongebob into seeing the error of his ways after catching tons of jellyfish. I'm fairly certain he only appears in this one episode, and never again. Shanghai Alternate Endings. Some of you might know about this, while to others this is a crazy new discovery, but to be brief, Shanghai actually had multiple endings. At the end of the episode, the Flying Dutchman picks who gets a wish, with three possible endings. The fun part is that this was Apache episode, who hosted a vote so that viewers could call in and vote for whose ending would win. Obviously Spongebob's won, and honestly it's almost like this was planned for, since the other endings were kinda underwhelming. Still a fun piece that you don't see much of with the reruns anymore. In fact, there are three different versions of this. The original airing, featuring the phone number and all vote related stuff, the DVD version of this episode, which removes the phone number, and a third version called Patchy's Pick, which is what airs as reruns now. Some of these edits were pretty decently done so that they could cleverly remove references to the original airing, but some of them weren't perfect, and every time I'd watch a rerun, the lip sync would be slightly off for certain shots of Patchy, and I thought I was going insane or something. But wait, there's more! Because there are also some different Patchy segments for if Squidward or Patrick had won. Both of these were aired only on Canal Cinco for some reason, with the audio in Spanish, but then we were able to get the English audio for both. Oh, and the one for Patrick was sent to someone on Discord apparently. So, did they save a copy? No! They instead recorded their screen with their phone. Ugh. Guys, look, I appreciate media being found like this, but seriously, what would be even better is if you stopped recording your screen with your phone and instead just, oh yeah, saved the video properly. I can think of maybe one or two instances where recording the screen like that would actually be useful, but otherwise, please just save the video normally. Please. If nothing else, if for some reason you can't save the video properly and you have to use some sort of screen recording, use screen recording software like OBS. We have technology. But anyway, I just mentioned that, so if you're wondering why the audio for the Patrick segment sounds bad, you know why. I'm only playing samples of these as well, though the full versions are easy enough to find now. And hey, it sure beats the version where someone used AI to fill in the English audio for Patchy. Disgusting! And the winner is... Wait a sec, this must be a mistake. But the numbers don't lie. Uh, believe it or not, the winner is... 
Squidward. So go ahead, relax, and enjoy our most requested ending, Squidward style. And now, how about we take a look at the endings you didn't choose, you didn't pick? <laughs> that Patrick shivers me timbers right down to my peg leg. <laughs> and last but not least, you didn't vote for old SpongeBob. But let's see what SpongeBob would have chosen if uh, no potty. We don't need the envelope. We already know who won. Potty. <laughs> Procrastination Lost Scenes Speaking of lost things from episodes, for a long time, Procrastination had three scenes removed from reruns, those being one with characters playing outside, another with footage of a race car crash, and finally one where Spongebob does exercises with his nose. As for why? Well, the first scene had Patrick putting suntan lotion on Sandy, which looks, to quote the Spongebob wiki, like Patrick was unhooking Sandy's bikini. Which was... A stretch, honestly. Also, shouldn't she have, you know, the rest of her suit on? To me, I think the more eerie part is that Sandy is just sitting there lifeless. She doesn't even move at all. The second scene was because Nick was afraid kids would imitate a car crash, because that totally makes sense. And the final one? Well, okay, honestly, just look at it. I think you can sort of guess why. These have returned in Nicktoons reruns, as well as in modern releases of episodes, such as the HD releases. Patrick's Jail Time In Spongebob Meets the Strangler, Patrick is in jail at the end of the episode. Of course, this is likely just a joke that he turned himself in because he thought he was the Strangler, but it makes me wonder why they decide to put him in there anyway. Maybe for putting a hole in Spongebob's wall or something. Missing HD Episodes Back in 2019, the original three seasons of Spongebob were rescanned and re-released in HD. Well, most of them. These are the episodes I've been showing you for most of the video, but notably, certain episodes, seemingly ones with patchy segments, are surprisingly absent. And it's not that the patchy segments are gone, the entire episode is gone along with it. However, Shanghai, for some reason, still has its patchy segments in and goes along with the HD episodes. I've never gotten this either, since clearly the patchy parts of this episode appear to be a basic fill-the-frame upscale. Maybe it's because the other patchy segments are more involved? Lots of HD re-releases do this, where most of the episodes are in HD, while randomly a couple episodes are in their original standard definition resolution. At least here it sort of makes sense as to why, although in many others it just doesn't. Old Spongebob Flash Games there have been Spongebob Flash games as far back as 1999, with the first one I could find being a Spongebob slide puzzle game. The big question I want to know is if any of these are considered lost, and if so, how many? I couldn't find anything from at least this time period that seems to be lost, but who knows, maybe I just didn't look enough. Also, the slide puzzle game is, uh, cool, I guess. Spongebob Game Boy Warning Screen if you play Spongebob Legend of the Lost Spatula on a Game Boy or Super Game Boy, it will give a warning screen that the game needs to be played on a Game Boy Color. The slightly eerie thing about this is just how that's the entirety of it. There's no musical backing track or anything, it's just silence. Imagine playing this on a Super Game Boy at night, only to be greeted with this. I'm not even the type that gets scared easily by stuff like anti-piracy screens or anything like that, but despite everything, this one just seems a bit unsettling. Perhaps that's just me. MTV Video Mods MTV Video Mods was a series of animations made using game models and engines, all done to fit a music video. For, 
well, MTV. In the case of Spongebob, this was All the Small Things by Blink-182. This was apparently lost media for a while, but now we have it, and in HD, by one of the original creators of the video, who in the description of their upload wanted to make it very clear that these were model rips from Lights Camera Pants, the Spongebob party game that exists for some reason, and not model rips from Battle for Bikini Bottom. You can actually read how they put a lot of effort into this, especially due to some limitations that had to be dealt with such as being unable to do motion capture and instead having to do everything with keyframed animation. Spongebob and to a lesser extent Patrick are pretty well done, while the others... Okay, I'm sorry, but it's a bit freaky how dead they look. Sandy wears the exact same expression, as well as Mr. Krabs and all the extras. At least Spongebob can blink. Also, Plankton is actually terrifying. I don't know, it probably doesn't help that I associate most of this with something that could be done in Gmod nowadays. But that all being said, don't mistake this for me ragging on the video, since it's actually pretty good, especially knowing the limitations those making it had to work around, like how Spongebob doesn't sing, which literally isn't true, but okay. Midlife Crustacean Band. So most people remember Midlife Crustacean, right? Yeah, remember the ending? Well, apparently Nick doesn't want you to, as this episode's been pulled from reruns and streaming services. Because the panty raid scene, despite being completely okay for over 15 years, was suddenly decided to not be okay anymore. Okay, slight rant here, but I'd at least get this decision if it was aired once, they thought it was bad, and so never aired it again. That's happened to other episodes of TV shows before. That doesn't mean I'd necessarily agree with it, but I'd at least understand the decision. But no, this episode was perfectly fine for years, until it suddenly and out of nowhere wasn't. As far as I can tell, there's only one obscure iTunes collection where you can still find the episode, and there's a distinct possibility that's just because even Nick missed that one. It wouldn't surprise me if that one gets removed too. So what will be the only way to see this once perfectly fine episode? Piracy, of course! Thanks, Nick. Seriously, thanks for removing a perfectly fine episode. You bring back the car crash scene, but oops, better remove the panty raid scene, because that makes a ton of sense. Spongebob's house party lost music. In the episode Party Pooper Pants, there's a scene where Spongebob looks into his house while watching everyone enjoy the party without him. There's a song that plays for a short time, which was never officially released, and was lost to media. Luckily, however, the channel Spongediver's music managed to find and upload it. Somehow. Well, hey, at least it isn't lost media anymore. Bikini Bottom Nuclear Fallout Theory. This one is both surprisingly unknown, but also common, strange as that may sound. During the Cold War, the US tested lots of nukes in the Pacific. One of these places was Bikini Atoll, which is said to be directly above where Bikini Bottom is. Hence, Spongebob and all that goes on in it is the result of nuclear radiation likely mutating the sea life into characters like they are now. This also explains the use of the nuclear test video, which is used sometimes in the series. Less related, but general human interference could also explain how certain otherwise metallic homes and buildings got there. There's even the fact that the Krusty Krab is a crab cage. Also, there are two episodes which make direct reference to human involvement, so this theory isn't too far-fetched. SpongeBob Summer Splash SpongeBob Summer Splash was a segment of bumpers aired during well, Summer, on Nick, which used some very... Oh my goodness! Squidward! ...pre-made versions of Spongebob and his friends. I wouldn't exactly call this bootleg, more so... different. You know, in an uncanny sort of way. This aired in 2000, 2001, and supposedly later on was aired on Nicktoons in 2003, although I can't find any footage of the one from 2003. Something about this Squidward frame is really funny to me. And finally, here's this meme, because I have no idea where else I would use this meme. Does Squidward take requests? If so, could he play... MF Doom. My pleasure. <gasps> Just One Bite deleted scene. In Just One Bite, there's a scene you probably didn't notice was even gone until you heard about this, which is why this is so low on the iceberg. 
Squidward goes to the Krusty Krab and sees the Patty Vault inside. Honestly, a fairly clean edit, all things considered. However, as it turns out, there's an original version which doesn't go directly to the Patty Vault. Instead, Squidward gets into the Krusty Krab, but activates the alarm system, which is a bucket of water. Except it isn't water at all, but gas. A match is lit, and we see an explosion. And then the same thing happens in the kitchen. Why was this cut from future airings then? Well, you see, there was an event that happened in 2001, which made this scene get removed. As we all know, of course, we're talking about the release of the hit movie Shrek. Shrek, I loved you. Our ogre lord has betrayed us. Why? What other big events happened in 2001? Okay, seriously though, and maybe it helps that we're over two decades removed from that event. But why was this even removed? I mean, yeah, I get explosion, but really? That's all it takes to pull that scene? Clearly it was easy enough to remove, but I don't know, to me that just seems a bit silly, especially with hindsight. Oh, and would you like to know the best part? This actually aired AFTER that event happened. So basically Nick gave this scene the complete green light, but then AFTER it aired they decided, uh, oh, you know what, never mind, we're not going to. I could have at least understood it if it had aired BEFORE the event happened, but the fact that it got the green light afterwards, until they decide actually never mind it isn't okay anymore, is just stupid. Spongeboy. To make this short, Spongeboy was basically proto Spongebob, used in very early designs and storyboards of Spongebob. He looked a bit sillier, but his name was eventually changed to Spongebob after it was found out that Spongeboy might be copyrighted. Spongebob Timeline Order. As I've mentioned earlier on, Spongebob is fairly episodic in nature, so I don't think a timeline order really matters all that much, although I will say that the first episode should clearly be first, and according to Hillenburg, the first movie is at the very end of the timeline. Spongebob Stole the Secret Formula Like I mentioned with Rich Spongebob earlier, it's highly likely that Spongebob just sort of stole the formula from Mr. Krabs, since pretty patties were basically just colorful Krabby Patties. I think Mr. Krabs let this slide, in part because he traded the Krusty Krab for the Pretty Patty stand, but who knows. Mandela Effect So for those who are for some reason unfamiliar with the Mandela Effect, it's basically a collective misremembering of certain details. The easiest examples are the Berenstain Bears being misremembered as the Berenstain Bears, or the Fruit of the Loom logo being different. In the case of Spongebob, well, there are probably a couple I could name. The biggest one has to be the scene in I Was a Teenage Gary. You've probably heard of this by now, but essentially the theory goes that when Squidward accidentally injected himself with snail plasma, there was a sequence showing him turning into a snail. But oh, it was only in the original airings and was cut later on for being too disturbing. And I mean, as we've seen, it wouldn't be impossible, even if it happens years after the fact. <clears throat> but yeah, sorry to ruin the surprise for everyone, but this doesn't exist. Yes, the scene transition was weird, and yes, on the surface, it wouldn't be surprising if this did exist. But fans have gone so far as to find recordings of the original airing, and needless to say, it doesn't exist. Spongebob X Presidents Okay, this one is pretty funny. So you've heard of Saturday Night Live, right? They had a segment called TV Funhouse, which had its own sub-segment called X Presidents. Hopefully you're still following along. Well, in one episode literally titled Propaganda, we see none other than Spongebob. Okay, so cool, they got a sound alike, right? No. They got Tom Kenny, the official voice actor of Spongebob, to play Spongebob, complete with lines such as this. I consider myself a patriot, but I'm not comfortable doing this. I mean, it just seems really racist. You want me to sponge up all of the urine in America and then squeeze myself over Saddam Hussein's mouth? However, Nick wasn't very happy. Like, really not happy. They kept Tom Kenny, likely because Spongebob's voice is insanely difficult to do, and they didn't want to find someone else for it. Nick has made sure since this incident, though, that Tom Kenny is only doing Nick-approved things with the Spongebob voice. And save for maybe one or two notable exceptions, that's remained the case since. Also, as a quick note, the Powerpuff Girls are in this segment too, and it's kind of funny how inaccurate it is. Yeah, something tells me these guys would have been sent into the stratosphere before they managed to lay a scratch on the Powerpuff Girls. Fly of Despair Animation Error 
Back to Shanghai, you can notice that in the Fly of Despair sequence, Squidward only has two legs. To be fair, when you see it in motion, it's pretty hard to notice unless you're really looking for it. I mean, not even I noticed it until it was pointed out to me. Impossible Pie Storage In Dying for Pie, I have no clue how Spongebob stored the pie like this, especially without it, well, detonating. That's it. That's the entry. I just want to know how Spongebob stored a whole pie in his back pocket. I mean, we could obviously make a bakery joke here, but seriously, how did he do that? Pizza Delivery Puppet Remake So there is an official pizza delivery remake made with puppets. It isn't quite the same runtime as the original, but it's pretty neat to see for what it is. I don't think it's the most amazing thing ever, like how some of the expression from the animated version is missing, but it's still neat to see regardless, though I wonder why it was made. I guess just for fun or something. Spongebob's True Thoughts Remember how I mentioned that Tom Kenny can't do things with Spongebob's voice that aren't Nick approved anymore? Well, there's at least one exception to that, it would seem. Tom Kenny was on WTF Podcast, and he said, well actually I'll just play the clip. Well, you know, this is, this is the only, you know, if it wasn't for the Christmas shit, I wouldn't fucking work. This is the only time of the year that I fucking work. It pisses me off. It's like, you know, I'm glad to have it, knock on wood, but mother... This, in tandem with the rich Spongebob theory, makes me wonder if the only reason he actually works is for something that happens at Christmas. Maybe a Christmas party? Maybe that's where the embarrassing photo comes from. The Caveman The Caveman is from Apache segment in Spongebob BC, who ends up singing a song with a robot. The only reason he's this low on the iceberg is because... Okay, seriously, when was the last time you heard anyone talk about him? Or frankly, the entire special, now that I think about it. Scaredy Pants Rare Airings Okay, this one is a bit more of a personalized one for me, but am I the only one who almost never saw reruns of the episode Scaredy Pants? Now, I know what you must be thinking. Oh, because it's a Halloween special. Okay, but I saw Christmas Who reruns plenty of times. I didn't see Scaredy Pants for years, and when I finally did, I was very confused since I had no idea it existed. Did it only air on Halloween or something? Because when I saw it, I don't recall it being Halloween, so that wouldn't make sense. Seriously, let me know, did this not get many reruns, or was it just me? Customer Customer is the fish at the end of pizza delivery who yells at Spongebob and Squidward for not getting his drink. Because after all, how is he supposed to eat his pizza without his drink that he didn't order? The only reason he's this low on the iceberg is because I bet you didn't know he was actually named Customer. He was used once and never again in the original seasons. It's almost like he left a bad impression or something. The Band Geeks Incident so do you remember that just one bite deleted scene I mentioned? Yeah, well as it turns out, there was another incident that should be mentioned. Namely, the scene in Band Geeks where the flag twirlers spin their flags so fast they propel into the air, crash into a blimp, and explode. Now okay, when do you think this was aired? September 7th, 2001. So you think that scene would get modified or cut entirely given how it happened to just one bite over that same 2001 event? Well, no. I could find no evidence that it stopped airing, was pulled from reruns for any length of time, or anything similar. This despite the fact we hear plane noises, see an aircraft blow up, and it's implied that those two fish literally just died. So that's fine, but a joke about Squidward being set on fire by gas? Well, that's too far. Don't get me wrong, I don't think either should have gotten hit with removed scenes or anything like that, but I'm really surprised it happened to just one bite and not this one. Behind Closed Doors Just a fair warning, this entry is a bit... adult, shall we say. You can skip to this timecode if you don't want to hear about this entry. I'm not going to show or say anything adult, but just because the subject matter itself is a bit adult, you shouldn't look this up if you don't want to see something like that. Now then, on to the entry proper. Behind Closed Doors is a very adult series of Spongebob sketches done by some of the Spongebob team during the first couple years of Spongebob as a sort of storyboard jam. If you know about the Rugrats Incredibles storyboard jam, it's like that except less dark and more just adult oriented. A storyboard jam is basically something to help the creators blow off steam. 
This wasn't even known to exist up until several months ago as of the time of making this video, so it's pretty neat to find. Though I'm not showing this because, well, again, it's somewhat adult, so instead I'm showing what the final episode safe versions are. Fair warning though, once you see these storyboards, you probably won't be able to look at the final episode versions quite the same ever again. Patchy's Lost Episode Commercial Segments Now this one's a strange one. You see, during the lead up to the Spongebob Lost Episode, we had the Patchy segment where he's lost the Lost Episode. Well apparently before that, there were a bunch of bumpers and commercials essentially advertising a special with various celebrities included. This is actually really neat, and it's almost never talked about, to a point where I came across this literally by mistake while making this iceberg. I will say though that some of the quality on these VHS rips kinda leave a lot to be desired. If anyone out there has these in, well, better quality, I made a whole guide on how to transfer VHS tapes in a really good way. This isn't even me trying to advertise my own videos, more as I made that video for a very good reason, and seeing VHS rips like this was the reason why. Or hey, better yet, you have a DVD recording version of it. More people should have used DVD recorders. Oh well. Anyway, these segments are really cool, and I hope more people will learn about them. Rock Bottom is the Ghetto. You know, why is this even on the iceberg, let alone this low? This is the most duh entry on any of these lower levels. I'm not going to pretend like I remember why I put this entry so low on here. There was probably a reason why, but I sure don't remember it. But uh, yeah, Rock Bottom is the Ghetto. It's scary and you'll feel like you'll get mugged at any moment. Fun place! Mr. Krabs War Crimes Okay, I swear I'm not making this up, but there's apparently a theory out there that Mr. Krabs fought for the Japanese during World War II. Despite this directly flying in the face of the nuclear fallout theory, it does make sense since he was in the Navy, although he notably doesn't specify which, and in the Krusty Krab training video, it mentions Mr. Krabs being depressed after the war, which could possibly mean World War II, or, you know, all those other wars. Maybe he was depressed knowing the things he had done. Personally though, I have a different idea. I think that Mr. Krabs was in Vietnam, and that he felt guilty for all that he had done during his time there. Perhaps even war crimes, or at least something he felt was similar to them. Excuse me! I didn't do it! Wow, this got dark. Jimmy Neutron Interruptions During the lead up to the release of the Jimmy Neutron movie, Nick began playing interruptions with Jimmy Neutron messing with the video and or audio of shows, usually lasting several seconds. The ones pertaining to Spongebob that I could find include two what I'll call puppet segments, one from Squeaky Boots and the other from Hookie. The other Spongebob one I could find was from Ripped Pants, where Jimmy fast forwards, rewinds, and briefly loops a portion of the episode. What sucks is we don't seem to have one where Jimmy applies wacky effects to the episode, like this one I found from Hey Arnold. Jimmy's trying to be the world's first YTP'er, huh? Still, these are fun to see now, and I hope we find more of them at some point, since many of these are currently lost media. Squidward froze to death. This is the theory that Squidward froze to death during the events of SB129. Even though he was immediately thawed? Look, I don't know where I was going with this one, but it's possible he did just freeze to death and was revived by Spongetron? Yeah, I've got nothing. Patchy's House You can find the house that was used in the Patchy segments on Google, which, it's actually amazing it was found. Now then, am I going to say what the address is? <laughs> no, you silly livers! No! Especially because this house is sold, meaning someone likely, you know, lives there. I will say that looking at pictures of the inside, while maybe one or two parts seem maybe a bit familiar, it's pretty clear this was just the exterior house they picked while the interior was a set, which would make sense. A lot of shows tend to do that. Mrs. Puff's Original Identity During the episode No Free Rides, Mrs. Puff mentions how she'll have to move out of town and go under a different name before saying that she can't do that again. But what I've heard very few people even ask about is what Mrs. Puff's Original Identity even is. Obviously, this isn't the first time this has happened, so that raises the question, who is Mrs. Puff really? We may never know the answer. Astrology with Squidward Astrology with Squidward was a series of shorts where Squidward would briefly discuss, generally with snide remarks, 
and give predictions for Astrological Signs, which aired between 2000 and 2001. Of note, however, was that not all the signs were covered. These were generally funny enough, but since the lost media search for these has dissipated, I don't really hear many people talk about these anymore. Also, my favorite line of the series has to be that Many famous fibbers and elected officials are cancers. Spongegar. Now while Spongegar isn't exactly uncommon, the reason he's so low on this iceberg is because everyone, and I mean everyone, seemed to mistake him with Prehistoric Spongebob, which is incorrect. Stop calling Prehistoric Spongebob Spongegar, they're different. Impact on other Nick shows. So we all know Spongebob was a huge hit basically right out of the gate. However, this also had an impact on other Nick shows. Nick got lightning in a bottle with Spongebob, but they decided that they would get very demanding of other new shows. As in, if your show isn't doing as well as Spongebob did right out of the gate, your show is likely not getting very many seasons, if even more than one. This sucks because it led to many fine series going bust due to not meeting Nick's unreasonably high expectations, being relegated to reruns for the rest of time. I don't know how long this phenomenon lasted. Some say it only lasted for the years surrounding the beginning of Spongebob, while others say it lasted for many years afterwards. Krusty Hospital In a Krusty Towers episode, Mr. Krabs says at the end of the episode that they're going to go to medical school, implying that there would be a Krusty Hospital at some point. Did this actually happen? Honestly, I doubt it. Mr. Krabs probably looked at the price of medical school and decided it wasn't worth it. But imagining a crusty hospital would be funny, along with how much Mr. Krabs would charge. I have got to get my... Okay, time for a bit of a test to see how long you've been on the internet. When you hear Squidward say, I have got to get my... What does your brain fill in the remainder of the sentence as? The rest of the line from the episode, or something else? There's not much else to this entry, I just find the whole thing funny. The Next Day Card So you have time cards in Spongebob, right? Well here's this one for the next day, which shows up in Born Again Crabs. It stands out so much compared to all the others though. This is the only one with characters, and why are they in here to begin with, unlike the others? Why is Patrick even here? It's not like he even appears in this episode. This time card has always been the strangest one to me. It's just so... out of place. Patrick's socks. For some reason, Patrick has socks. The easiest example has to be in Battle for Bikini Bottom, where he has a bunch of missing socks, even though Patrick literally never wears them. So why he even has the socks? I really have no clue. King Neptune was fired. At the end of Neptune's spatula, we see King Neptune making Krabby Patties after having lost to Spongebob in the previous competition. However, we never see him doing this again. One of a couple things could have happened. Either King Neptune was still making them poorly and he was thus fired, or he just decided to leave because I don't think there was anything really keeping him there. Honestly, despite the name of this entry, the second one is really more likely. Employee of the Month Spongebob has been Employee of the Month every single time, with Squidward only actually competing for it once in the episode of the same name. This episode is honestly hilarious, but that's not what we're here to know. What I want to know is just how many awards are there. Well, that's pretty simple. We can see here that there are 44 months, including the empty one, which means that at the time of this episode, Spongebob had been working at the Krusty Krab for at least three years. Spongebob's real age. Speaking of time, what is Spongebob's real age? Since we have his license and sleepy time to go off of. He was born July 14th, 1986, which means that at the beginning of the series he was 13, assuming time goes to scale. However, time clearly doesn't go to scale. Remember that employee of the month entry? Well this shows that Spongebob has been working for over three years, but that's impossible given the airing of the episodes. My theory? The nuclear radiation from the Bikini Bottom Fallout theory makes it so that time progresses faster. 
Perhaps that's also why Squidward managed to survive being frozen for 2,000 years. Time simply moves faster, perhaps exponentially so. This is also proven by this time in Spongebob's house party, where Spongebob says it's only 10 seconds past 8, for it to suddenly jump to 20 seconds, and then 4 seconds later it jumps to 30 seconds. So nuclear radiation is now confirmed to affect time itself, causing it to go faster. That, or everyone's clocks are just off by a lot. I mean, it's notable that their technology isn't the newest ever, and older clocks used to gradually drift out of sync by as much as minutes by the end of a single day. But you would think that all this would reset since they do still have a day and night cycle. Or, and now this is just a hunch here, but it's a cartoon and it's not supposed to go one to one with our time scale. The Christmas Party We don't know much about the Christmas Party, just knowing that in Patrick's secret box, in a hidden compartment activated by the string in the box, Patrick reveals that there's an embarrassing photo of Spongebob from the Christmas Party. What can this embarrassing photo entail? Who knows? Anchovies. So we see anchovies throughout the series, but I specifically want to note their appearance in Help Wanted. Why in this episode, and from what I can recall, only this episode, were they a bunch of starving fish that nearly destroyed the Krusty Krab, acting in swarms? Seriously, if anyone has any clue why they did this, let me know. Patrick can see music. Patrick has the ability to see and feel musical notes. Why? I don't know, he just can, okay? Maybe it's a starfish thing. Sandy's Pocket Nukes We all remember the chase scene where Sandy is chasing after Spongebob and Patrick after they had the audacity to call Texas dumb. At one point, Sandy manages to destroy an entire boulder, lasso Patrick from at least 100 feet away. But more importantly, she pulls Patrick back, then we see from behind the horizon an explosion. A mushroom cloud, no less. Sandy didn't just destroy Patrick, she made him explode. And not just that, it appears it was nuclear. Not like a big nuke or anything, but big enough. Well, back during the Cold War, the US would test more portable nuclear launching devices, with the most famous one being the W-54, which you might know as the Davy Crockett, even though the Davy Crockett is technically the launcher and not the warhead proper. This warhead was 11 by 16 inches and weighed 51 pounds, this would be more than possible for someone to carry on their person should they so choose. So what I'm trying to say here is that Sandy carries nukes with her while running after characters that insulted Texas, blows them up, and can then manage to survive the explosion. That is both incredible and also terrifying. The Bird Brains The Bird Brains are a band which plays for Patchy's house party. Even though Patchy doesn't like them and tries to make them walk the plank, of course only remembering after they begin to fly away that they're birds. Also, this person being dressed in this bird costume as the drummer is honestly so funny to me. Eventually, the bird brains manage to get in and actually play a song all the way through, that being Underwater Sun. Genie Crabs Okay, so this is most noticeable in the HD versions of the episodes, but in a couple instances, you can see what I'll call genie crabs. The most obvious example of this is in Dying for Pi, where you can see him right here. This was almost certainly cropped out by the overscan on older tube TVs, so that's why so few people really know about this phenomenon. I just think it's a funny visual thing. Red Mist Original Frame Now, you're probably all familiar with Red Mist by now. You know, the creepypasta. But does anyone know where the original frame for Red Mist comes from? I mean, to me, it feels like just looking at it that it should be from one of the earlier seasons, but maybe that's just me. To be fair, it doesn't seem like anybody else knows either. So I guess it'll be a mystery just like Victim 1 from that Mario ROM hack. You know, until we solve it. Like we did with Victim 1 from the Mario ROM hack. Also, hopefully we solve the Jeff the Killer one soon too. July 25th, 2005 Broadcast Hijack now, the July 25th, 2005 broadcast hijack is an eerie supposed broadcast hijacking that took place on Nick while airing the episode Your Shoes Untied. Some things about the episode have changed, such as Spongebob falling over and Patrick calling for him to no response, and Gary glitching for a while. There have been various remakes of the event, some of higher quality and simply more eerie than others. Now then, is this event real? No, of course not. 
Oh, yeah, sorry, there was actually a spooky, scary broadcast hijacking of Nick, a very popular network, airing an extremely popular show, which happened back in 2005, but people only started talking about it over a decade and a half after the fact, because, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's sort of an offshoot of analog horror, basically. Now, some of the remakes are pretty decently startling, though, so it has that going for it. But in terms of being legitimate, yeah, it isn't, I'm sorry. Now then, this next entry isn't for the faint of heart. Those of you with weak constitutions may wish to skip to this timestamp. I gotta get out of here! Too late! Ready or not, here comes the next entry. One so horrifying, you'll never be able to look at a certain episode the same way again. Ahem. <clears throat> Skibbity Crabs. Guys, you get it? Because it's Mr. Krabs with his head sticking out of the toilet. Just like the funny skibbity dum 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 dum. Yes, 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 skibbity do skibbity do skibbity do da 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 I am so sorry for that previous entry. Plankton's Family Fate. Speaking of that episode, whatever did happen to Plankton's family after this episode? They ran off in fear of the supposed Krabby Patty recipe, but I'm fairly certain we never see them again after this. But maybe something happened to them afterwards. You know, whales do eat plankton after all. Personalized Lost Episodes Okay, have you ever sworn that a Spongebob episode existed, only to realize that it never did? Or even just portions of episodes? This could be as simple as misremembering things. I never really had any of the episodes be entirely non-existent, though I have misremembered certain details of episodes from when I was younger. Mainly patchy segments, since those were simply seen less often. An easy example, at least for me, has to be the Spongebob BC segment, where I always thought that the caveman actually said some things to Patchy and spoke outside of the final song. Or the final chase sequence where I thought there were a few more dinosaurs instead of just a T-Rex. That, and I used to think the T-Rex ate Patchy. Krabby Patty Real Formula We don't know what the real secret formula to the Krabby Patty is, and likely never will. Of course, this is by design, and it was made pretty clear from the beginning that the audience isn't supposed to know it. Krusty Krab Heat Death Theory When Spongebob and Squidward go on strike, Spongebob ends up destroying the Krusty Krab, with Mr. Krabs telling them that they'll be repaying their debt forever. And one eternity later, we see that they're still working. My theory is that the last thing in the universe will in fact be the Krusty Krab. Why? I don't know, I just think it's funny. Bikini Bottom Destroyed In the episode Spongebob, Sandy, and the Worm, the worm falls down a ravine. However, Bikini Bottom has been pushed there. The worm falls on the entire city and destroys it. My guess is that they had to rebuild an entirely new city just like the original one, though more than likely some of the areas on the outskirts, like Spongebob's house or the Krusty Krab, managed to survive. Alternatively, you could consider this being a theory about what happened after the town was destroyed by panic over… a literal butterfly. Okay, I'm sorry, I still find that episode hilarious. Patrick died. Patrick is shellboarding during the opening to I Had an Accident, where he flies into a mountain and dies. Of course, we find out that this was just a video game. Or what if this was actually a simulation, and Patrick was being controlled in that simulation by another Patrick, but one of the Patricks actually did die? Yeah, this is just another stupid theory. Joe. Now you might be wanting to ask a question about Joe, but you shouldn't. There's no need to discuss or even think about who Joe is. Let's move on. Potty is dead. Okay, deviating from the original seasons for just a moment, I want to mention that Potty the Parrot, a big part of the patchy segments in these original seasons, was destroyed. Well, at least the original version. They were doing a segment for Atlantis Square Pantis Underwater, but it seems Potty was destroyed in the process. I only bring this topic up because Potty was a big part of the original seasons in patchy segments, and it's a shame the original is now gone. Demonic Spongebob Demonic Spongebob is a theory that Spongebob acts as a demon towards those who don't like him. So, mainly Squidward. Perhaps it's to make Squidward go crazy, not understanding why so many people like Spongebob. This could also apply to other characters as well, such as Mrs. Puff, but it's mainly for Squidward. Season 3 is the real ending. Well, okay, this one's only half true. Technically, the first movie is the real ending. 
What I mean by this, however, is that season 3 was supposed to be the final season, at least according to Steven Hillenburg. But Nick kept demanding more and more seasons, which is part of why Hillenburg left for so long. I kinda wish that Spongebob had ended on season 3, honestly, as season 4 was a mixed bag. Some might call it a mixed bag. Some of the later seasons were just flat out bad, and even now, while you can tell things have improved somewhat, it's never gotten as consistently good as the original seasons. Well, that ends off the classic Spongebob iceberg. Please let me know what you thought of this video, and if you learned something during this iceberg. I know I sure learned some things I wasn't expecting. Thank you all for watching, and take care. What the? It's stuck! Thank you.